Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups. And today, we got another story. And this was a long-distance relationship that was really going really well. They got along quite well. Um, but it comes down to love, connection, I'm sorry, attraction, trust, and connection. And the number one thing in a long-distance relationship is, you bet, trust. Trust. And a lot of times, what happened? What's going on? If trust is broken and you're in a long distance, I mean, that's the most important cord you got, right? So let's get right into this. Hey, I saw your videos on YouTube and I like your point of view on relationship. I wanted to get advice on my situation. So when he gives me the full story, I was in a long distance relationship for almost a year. We both lived in California. I stayed in LA. She was in San Fran. And then we, you know, I saw her, I saw her once every month except, ex, except for two months. So once a month's pretty good, it's pretty decent, but at some point you need to have a plan in place where you're gonna be seeing each other more often. Because what happens is, each time you meet and you're in a really good place and you love each other, once a month, especially the, that's only about an hour flight away from each other, five hour drive, or six hour drive, um, I know this because I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, lived in San Diego, so I've done some of those drives. But that's not too far. Once a month's pretty good. But at some point, after a year or so, you're going to want more. And what happens is when you say goodbye, each time it gets harder on one of the individuals. Both of you, it's kind of hard, but maybe one person's a little more sensitive or insecure, and that's when the, it starts to uh, break. Okay, so... Conversations were always great. We got along so well. I felt like she was going to be in my life for years. Fast forward, but at what at what point were you going to live in the same area, by you know the same city? That's the question. Otherwise, a long distance relationship has a shelf life. Fast forward a bit. I had to move back to Chicago for work. She was still in California. Later moved to Boston. So obviously, you guys are both putting your jobs first over the relationship. Keep that in mind, and that's fine. But it will affect the relationship. Um, in between that time, she went to Miami. I, I had time to, off to see her. We had an amazing time. We got into a little argument about me seeing old friends that were girls, but I told her ahead of time, but you know how women are. Sometimes they are protective. Regardless, she's being insecure because you're in a long distance relationship. She misses you. You have less time together. So therefore she probably feels a, a lot less secure, but you got to keep in mind, if that's a, a pattern, it's not going away. Even if you're telling her about meeting these women, it's still an issue for her, and it's still going to come up again and again until you guys live closer to each other. And then, then if you live closer to each other or move in, and that's an issue, she's just a jealous individual that's highly insecure. Fast forward, sometimes it's circumstances, sometimes it's just pure personality and character. In this particular case, I'm going to guess it's circumstances, being that you're a long distance. You don't know yet until you're around her you know, 24 seven, you guys live together. Fast forward, when she moved to Boston, I saw her twice. First time, great time, really enjoyed it. Now the second time, it was a different time. It was our final day together. We were rock climbing, we started off great, until, dun, 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 dun. She went through my phone and went on my Snapchat. That means she doesn't trust you. That means she's a little bit insecure. And it also means that she cares about you and she's into you. She's worried about losing you. She saw me putting heart emojis on other girls' pictures. You dog. I mean, I don't personally do that. Uh, I don't know what that means. That could be playful. It could be fun. It could be misconstrued into something deeper. That's one of those things. That's perception of whoever's looking at it. Okay? You could have another girl think it's playful and fun, but she was looking for something when she went through your phone, and she found what she was looking for. And as harmless as it seems to you, she was looking for some kind of proof. She filtered for it. She found it. She accused you. Of course, that made her frustrated and upset. We talked in a private room near. By, by then, she went through my phone some more and saw other girls, but it was cordial conversations. She wanted to break up over that, and I tried to talk to her, but she wasn't trying to hear anything I had said. She accused me of cheating and a liar, which in certain extent kindness in her mind, but I never talked about seeing those girls. So bottom line, you didn't cheat. You're not saying you didn't, but you didn't cheat, so you shouldn't be being sorry for cheating. You shouldn't have to explain yourself a hundred times. If you didn't do something wrong, what then? 
but I never ca talked about seeing those girls or doing anything with them. I just put my hearts and left it at that. What does it mean to you to put a heart emoji? What's your intention? Are you being flirtatious? Do you want to meet up with those girls? What is your honest intention? And then explain that to her or explain that to yourself. Are you really going into a heart emoji as a friendly, playful thing? Or, or you're just being a loving friend? Uh, be honest. Are you, are you putting in some work on those girls? I don't know. And I knew these girls for years. Old friends. After hours of talking, we made up and we were cool. I flew back to Chicago. Chicago. The Bulls. Balls. And as soon as I landed, I felt weird. We came so far in our relationship to become this, going through each other's phone, that I didn't talk to her for a couple of days. She contacted me for a talk, and I didn't want to drag it on or any longer, so I called her. We were on the phone for six hours. That's a fucking long time. Six hours, that's almost a work shift. In the end, I broke up with her when she was trying to stay together. A couple days later, I realized I made a mistake. Well, you got sick. What happened is you got sick of pleading your case. If you were on the phone for six hours, you obviously were answering her questions and then she was asking the same questions or bringing up the same shit over and over again. Tell me I'm wrong on this one because I don't think you wanted to break up with her. You just got tired of being interrogated and you didn't feel like you were guilty of anything. I talked to her for two hours. Then we kind of got back together. We were cool for about a week. Then we both went out of town. We were both busy. She got upset that I didn't contact her enough because I messed up. No, you didn't mess up. She doesn't trust you. I wanted to explain and she didn't want to hear it because she already doesn't trust you so she's assuming the worst. And she's frustrated that you're in, you're in long distance. She's not saying it. You guys, are both, you guys are both accepting the fact that you have work coming first. You obviously have pretty good jobs. You work in major cities. But you're not thinking about how you're going to live closer to each other. You're just, the, the problems are becoming bigger and bigger. We talked a few times after we broke up. I begged to see her. She said, not now. Whenever you beg, it's highly unattractive. She offered to be friends because she still cared for me. She still wanted to be intimate and have sex with me. That means she still has attraction for you. Um, and she's connected to you and she wants to see you. So if that's the case, friends, but actually friends that st still want to be intimate, that's a different level than just being friends. That's friends with benefits, right? Um, and that, that kind of friendship can rekindle the old relationship a lot easier than friends that are strictly platonic. That should be a, a, a video because a lot of people, oh, the friend zone, it's completely different if they're w still willing to be intimate with you because that could be worked on. But just be friends. I, could, I couldn't do it. That's fine. If you can't do it, and uh, just be friends with benefits and see each other and that's not acceptable for your morals and your values, then don't do it. A couple weeks ago when we were on the phone, we had a great conversation. It felt weird though because she wasn't my girlfriend, but it felt like she was still was. Well, you still have a great connection. So you have attraction and connection still there. She still cares about you. The trust. We fell asleep on the phone like we always did, and I had the impression that that was our last time talking for a while, but she texted me the next day wanting to talk. Well, she wants to rework things. She's reconnected to you. She's still into you. The, the trust is an issue. I, I couldn't let her have it both ways, so I told her, let me, let, let me get some space. We haven't talked in two weeks. She's been looking at my Snapchat, liking my tweets, and brother tweets. She has been subtweeting me. Is this tweet flirting, flirting or whatever? <laughs> I think she still cares about me and loves me. She absolutely does in my eyes in reading this. She cares about you. She loves you. She's into you. She just doesn't like the long distance, and she's a bit insecure. And when a woman's insecure, they think of you as a good catch. And she still wants to see you. She still wants to talk to you. Um, she's just uncomfortable with giving you all of her heart and giving the title that your boyfriend, girlfriend, when you're sending heart emojis out. And she, she judges that as something pretty serious and you don't. Um, I mean, the bottom line is if you're going to get back into a relationship with her, um, she needs to trust you more. And are you going to be okay with answering questions all the time? Oh, were you with women? If you're on a business lunch or you're on a friendship with a girl and you talk to her, do you have to report that to her every time? Because the next time you see her, she's going to go through your phone. Choices. I just want to know what to do. I have to, if, 
what to do, I have to do to get her back. I told her, just give me stay, so should I contact her first or just continue no con? In your particular case, you still have a lot of confidence. If you feel like you can contact her without trying to have high expectations or become boyfriend, girlfriend right away, you need to rebuild the trust. You have the connection and the attraction already. It seems like you're in a position where you're not um, being extremely clingy or desperate. So you could probably call her up again, talk if you want to rebuild things through the phone. That's fine. Quit going straight into I want to be boyfriend, girlfriend. You need to rebuild the relationship from the bottom up. And you need to accept the fact that you're going to be in a long – if you get her back – what needs to change to make the relationship more healthy? It sounds like you need more trust, and the trust is being affected mainly by the long distance. So take a deep look at that. Please visit rightmac.com if you've got a breakup story to tell and you want to get my take, or if you'd like to get further clarity, get a little deeper, dig a little deeper, I would suggest you book a live coaching session with myself for an hour or two hours if you've got to do some serious eventing and get to the bottom of your issues and where you want to go moving forward. Okay, thank you for supporting the channel.